City elevated car. Weather beaten, brow beaten, just plain beaten. Oh, I'm by no means alone in the world. Quite a few of my kin have escaped the kin and pile, up to now. But all signs point to our days being numbered. The Third Avenue branch is the last remaining limb of my family tree. I remember how, when a youngster, we did our family chores with wood-burning engines. But soon we were taught that if we were to grow into a good, healthy system, we'd have to lead a cleaner life. So they shot us full of electricity, and we grew and grew until our structures became the transportation backbone of the largest city in the world. Our gable stations were a new high in architectural achievement when built. went well until the 1930s, when we noticed that subways were undermining our security. When we failed to carry our customary total of a million passengers a day, zip, the props were pulled out from under us. Acetylene torches did the rest. A horrible, horrible death for the poor old 2nd, 6th, and 9th Avenue branches. Our terrific noise, if you ask me, is one big reason for our downfall. Can we help it if the canyons of buildings we run through kick our sound around? Few folks realize that we have our quieter side. Why, one of our spurs mingles with the stately trees and fragrant flowers of the Bronx Park. can. From my windows, you will get glimpses of the most famous buildings in the world. From my windows, well, just wait. We have to pass through the dense Bronx tenement district before coming to Manhattan. It's an overall trip of 15 miles to South Ferry. From there, you'll be able to see the Statue of Liberty. stretch, sandwiched between the tenements, I always call Clothesline Alley. In a sense, it's my gateway to Manhattan. For outside it, just around this big curve, we cross the Harlem River, which separates the Bronx from Manhattan. Under my bridge is where East Side kids swim. Straight as a die now, down Third Avenue toward Midtown. Out of my windows along the way, I'm much too often reminded of my fate. Old blocks of old New York being turned under to make way for the new. Even though the Third Avenue is the last of the L's, there are still over a thousand people employed in operating us, and we carry 270,000 passengers a day. Kind of a melting pot on wheels, I am. I carry the old and the young, the dignified and the not so dignified. The pious and the hopeless. The 
towers of the Waldorf Astoria, where millionaires and visiting royalty stay, tell my passengers that we have reached Midtown Manhattan. The Chrysler Building, Grand Central Terminal, the Empire State Building, all in sight from my trembling station, which stands in the middle of famed 42nd Street. proceed south to Brooklyn Bridge and the Lower East Side made famous in song. The New York of the Smiths, the Cantors, Jessels, Winchells, the Roonies and the O'Grady's. Chinatown are ever present under my rails. Chinatown's Chatham Square, our route divides itself. The train to the left is ours, proceeding to South Ferry, as I promised you we would. The other is on its way to our City Hall terminal, neighboring the Woolworth building. On we go, our route becoming ever narrower, like a mountain stream cutting its way through a deep, booming gorge. We cross Wall Street and arrive at the little station where many a banker has paused to rub his palms, not in anticipation of the day's financial gains, but to warm his hands over the friendly, pot-bellied stove. swings out into the comparative open, and from my windows, the confining walls of skyscrapers give way to the maritime scene in New York Bay. South Ferry, where all the L's used to terminate, passengers transferring to Staten Island ferry boats or for the Statue of Liberty. One sightseeing guide often refers to my structure as the eighth wonder of the world. During L construction in the 1870s, the big wonder used to be how we'd keep from toppling into the street. To the aged, I am their past, still living. To childhood, I am fascination. To folks living along the tracks, I am everything, from a noisy nuisance to something as natural as morning, noon, and night. Well, that's the picture as of now. Time, borrowed time, will tell the rest.